What's going on guys? Uh, I've recovered from the flu and today I'm just going to be making a video on the general meta and sort of draft process that we're seeing in season 13 in pro play. Um, so me being me, I'm going to be looking mostly at LCK, but obviously I'm considering LPL as well. Uh, I'm not sure when LEC and LCS are starting, but of course I'll be looking at those as well once they kick off. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is something that's been on the front page of Reddit today with Kdrill making jokes out of how predictable the drafts are, which is quite amusing. Um, so we're seeing a ton of Nami on B1 with uh, followed into Zeri on R R1 and then R2 Maokai. And then we see... I can't find Maokai, hang on. There we go. If I could spell it would be easier. Then we see Vi on B3 or B2. And then we see Lucian on B3. And then they follow this up with Lulu. And this is happening like every single game. Obviously not every single game, but this is happening a lot. And it feels stale already, and I think people are getting bored of this. Um, but I think there's some big problems with this. Now, first things first, I think it needs to be said that Yumi is often banned. Um, otherwise, this Lulu would probably be Yumi. Although maybe it wouldn't, uh, just because of the... I, I really like Lulu into Lucian Nami. We saw at Worlds that a Lulu lane with an AD, uh, an AD carry with some safety or sustain um, is actually really good at resisting the Lucian Nami and just outscaling it. Zeri obviously brushes um, Vampiric Scepter going into Immortal Shield Bow. Um, we were seeing Aphelios using his Red Gun. We were seeing Misfortune rushing Bloodthirster with uh, Yumi as well. It was very interesting as an answer to Lucian Nami. So I actually like this answer into Lucian Nami. And I think this line is very, very winning for Red Side. Um, a lot of what Blue wants to do requires them getting ahead early, but it's actually quite unreliable that they do it. Um, Red has very, very good tools to stop Blue from engaging on them with their Vi draft. They have their Maokai, they have their Lulu. Um, Zeri is not as vulnerable to Vi as people think she is. Um, a lot of the time she can actually still just get away. The Vi gets CC'd after the ult goes off. It's only if Zeri's like really out of position that it makes a huge difference. Um, so yeah, I think Red are actually drafting pretty well and Blue are dropping the ball. So I want to talk about some things that they can do better and some things that... Well, one big thing that Red are leaving themselves vulnerable to. So by the time you get to B2, B3 here, uh, a lot of the time Silas isn't banned. And we saw at Worlds that Silas picked into Maokai just has a, a tendency to run over the game. But this is even better now than it was at Worlds, in my opinion, because uh, not only does he get the Maokai ult, but Silas jungle has become a thing. So as well as that, you're now enabling yourself a three-way flex, which at Worlds was a two-way flex. It's now a top mid jungle flex instead of just a top mid flex. So I think Silas here is really, really good. And like, if you're answering with Maokai here, you should probably be banning Silas if that's your uh, intention. Although that does then leave them the potential to B1 the Maokai um, if you ban Silas. So yeah, definitely more interesting dynamics, but the way that it's getting like left through in draft is... Uh, really criminal i think um if the teams do want to go for this vi angle which i don't like vi um I'm, you know i'm very very outspoken about not liking vi uh, but i think one thing that they could pivot into which i would like a lot more would be draven uh draven nami an extremely strong lane it functions similarly to lucian nami it doesn't like poke combo in the mid game but the lane phase functions the same uh draven obliterates zeri into the next dimension whether she's got lulu or you know whatever um, I think the only thing that could save Zeri here is maybe Karma, but Blue ban Karma and then uh, go for this Draven line. Uh, Karma's really good into Lucian Nami anyway, so it's definitely something they could consider banning. But yeah, I think the Draven scales better than the Lucian. It wins the lane harder. It has more volatility, which I think the Vi draft needs in order to like snowball and get ahead. It's more explosive. All of these things, I, I just really prefer Draven uh, going down this line. But yeah, outside of this like one draft line with the B1 Nami into the Zeri, um, let's talk about the the general meta we've been seeing. So I'm going to go roll by roll. I'll start out with top lane. So one thing we've seen a big resurgence of in top lane is Nar. Um, Nar, I think, is like, okay. Nar's fine. He's Nothing's changed about Nar, right? He's not suddenly got better than he was before. I think just what's happened is the game has changed People aren't as comfortable with what's good. People haven't figured it out yet. You know, myself included, literally everyone in the world has not figured out what is best right now. Um, and Nar is just such a comfortable baseline to fall back on. Um, he's always relevant. Um, 
He's never completely useless. He's never exceptional, in my opinion, either. Um, a lot of these drafts where they're picking Gnar, there are, I think there are better things that they could pick. Um, but the Gnar is fine, and I think that's why we're seeing a lot of him this early in the season. Uh, next up, we've got Jax. Jax is looking really good. Um, a lot of the things that were contesting Jax, I think, have been weakened. Uh, like, Aatrox was really strong in the early lane into him. Aatrox is now weaker. Um, Fiora as well, been nerfed really hard. Um, Jax feels to me like one of the premier top lane picks in the game right now. Um, he's being picked into the Nara a lot, um, so that's that's the thing. Um, but yeah, he, he has that potential to just run away with the game, and he's sort of... Um, I feel like he's good enough in lane while scaling into an absolute menace. So I, I really like Jax, and I'm glad we're seeing a lot of it. Um, we're still seeing the Sejuani flex, so this kind of covers one of the jungle picks as well. Uh, but yeah, we're still seeing some Sejuani flex. I think it's really good. The champ's really versatile. Uh, doesn't get blasted by many things in top lane. One of the things that she was blasted by being Fiora got nerfed. Uh, also Aatrox got nerfed. Was Aatrox was pretty solid into her. Um, so yeah, Sejuani Flex, still really good, super serviceable champion. She also gains access to Radiant Virtue now, which feels really good on her. Uh, Sejuani's looking good. Um, something that I've already talked about a lot is Fiora. I think the nerfs to her were very, very heavy-handed. It's one of the bigger nerfs I've seen in a while. I think she ended up losing about 10% of her... I think she lost 10% of the ratio on her vital damage, so 10% of her vital damage, kind of, because the base damage on that is so low, it's mostly scaling. So it's maybe like 9% of her true damage just disappeared, which is a crazy big nerf. I'd have to like actually check the numbers on it, but I think it was ginormous. Uh, so I don't think we'll see much Fiora outside of drafts where you look at it and go, oh my god, Fiora's insane here. And even then, she's not going to 1v9 like she did on World's Patch. Um, Fiora's a lot, lot worse than she was. So yeah, that's the overall top meta. Some things that I think I'm missing. Uh, Yone, we saw a lot of Worlds. I actually think Yone got better. Um, Fiora getting worse makes Yone better. Um, I mean, Aatrox getting worse removes one of his really good matchups that he was being counterpicked into. Uh, and also Jax being good makes picking Yone hard. But outside of that, I think Yone is really, really good. He's also a flex pick into mid lane. Uh, I think his build paths are really versatile. He can go these like tanky builds with Blade of the Ruin King. He can also go full crit and be a, uh, a big threat. I think he's really good in side lane, really good in team fights. He's just like a, a versatile champ that can... Uh, flex and I think he's quite strong at the moment uh, and also Gragas I think Gragas is um, similar to Sejuani though more oriented on like skewed towards disengage than engage uh, but very flexible I think he um, I'd like to see Radiant Virtue experimented with on him as well as uh, as Sej um, but yeah another multi-role flex champ like Sej that I'd like to see picked up from time to time especially when the enemy is very reliant on engage so We'll now move into jungle. Uh, the big one is Maokai. We're seeing a lot of Maokai. We're seeing this like first strike AP Maokai, which I think is actually really cool that we're seeing a new variation of Maokai. And I like that the tank variation of Maokai is still alive. Uh, Radiant Virtue on him as well. Really cool. Uh, so Maokai, I think, became even more flexible than he was on World Patch, which is like insane because I think he was the most flexible champion on World Patch. So now I think, I think Maokai premium is at an all-time high. Uh, which obviously gives a lot of Silas premium as well. Um, but yeah, Maokai, really, really good. Um, probably should have mentioned him in top lane, but right now I'm going to mention him in jungle, support, top. Uh, the champ's really good, really flexible, engage, disengage, poke, everything. The poke, uh, you can even like, with the new AP build, the poke um, variation, you can like lean heavier into it now as well. So yeah, like that was his worst role to fill was poke before. His engage, disengage and pick was really good, but his poke was kind of lacking. But now, no, no, no. Now he's got it all. Um, Vi, I've spoke about. She's being picked to lock down these hyper carries like Zeri. Um, I understand the thought process. I don't particularly like it. I think she falls off a cliff and becomes a bit of a minion. Like she's not the worst. She can still drop that R. Like, she's going to be at least somewhat useful. But I just don't think she does enough to warrant picking her. Um, yeah, and also, if you pick her early, which a lot of teams are doing, you're opening yourself up to drafts with uh, Morgana or Tom Kench. 
uh, Lissandra, Fiora, there's so many champions that can essentially ignore her. Uh, Sivir as well, and spell, you can just opt for the Sivir instead of the Zeri, and spell shield the Vile. Um, there's a lot you can do to deal with Vi. She's very, very one-dimensional and very, very easy to answer in draft, so I'd like to see less of her. Silas. Uh, Silas jungle is a thing now, guys. So Silas, as I mentioned in the uh, first segment of this video, Silas is now a three-way flex. Um... Maokai premiums at an all-time high, people are picking Vi, people are picking Sejuani, uh, people are picking Gnar again, another reason to go back to Silas, because Silas with Gnarl is disgusting. Uh, I think Silas is really, really good right now. Um, not in like any isolated role, but the fact that he can flex three roles makes him insane. Um, what else have we got in jungle? We have Elise. We're seeing a lot of Elise for some reason, um, particularly from Peanut. Uh, and it is managing to get things done early, and that's what it does. But then it starts to fall off, and there is so much reliance on getting things done early that if the enemy team can draft in a way to just not die, uh, they almost instantly win. This champion is one of the worst scaling champions in jungle, um, from my perspective. And because of that, I'm not a very big fan of it. Um, when I look at it, I see it doing things early and I'm like, yeah, that dive was cool, but I think other champions could have executed that dive. Like the guy that got dove, he took a bad trade and he got wave stacked under his tower. And like a Maokai could have dove that guy, you know? Maokai can also reset tower aggro with his W, um, just like Elise can with her E. So yeah, I'm not super impressed by the Elise. Um, next up, we've got Wukong. Now Wukong's grown on me. Uh, it, it has slight flex potential into top lane, but not massively. Like I think like 90% of the time you can just assume it's going jungle. Um, but what it does well, it does really well. Like It provides two AoE knockups. Um, he has pretty good build diversity now as well. I think you could look for a tankier build version with Radiant Virtue if you're lacking frontline. Outside of that, you just go Sundera, the standard bruiser build. Um, but his team fighting is just so reliable. Um, and I think he kind of has the thing like uh, with Nar, where he's so reliable and so just baseline good, never really like unbelievably exceptional, but he's such a nice baseline to fall back on. Um, that yeah, he, he's just gaining prevalence based on that. And in a similar vein to that, I think there's Viego. Um, Viego, I feel like whenever everything else is like unknown, Viego will just be good because. He's just one of those champions. He thrives in chaos. He thrives in uh, scrappy fights, getting his resets off and things like that. So yeah, I'm, I like Viego at the minute. Uh, I think we should see more Viego than we do, especially with a lot of um, champs being picked that can poke people out from afar. Think like Zeri. Um, I'll get into mid lane later, but like Syndra, Azir, you know, um, Viego's follow-up potential on that is really cool. So yeah. Onto what I would like to see more, I would really like to see Diana. Um, so why would I like to see Diana? A lot of these drafts are really reliant on controlled fights that they get to have on their terms. And I think Diana is, it almost does the same as Vi. Uh, you combine it with a Yasuo, right? So Diana Yasuo. I think you can slam Diana Yasuo into some of these drafts and just have so much threat. It's like Jarvan on crack, you know? Um, I mean, you could put Jarvan in there somehow as well, but I think that's overkill. But yeah, you just put Diana Yasuo into your draft and just those two picks on their own can transform your draft. So we're seeing a lot of range at the moment. Um, people have caught onto Ash, they've caught onto Varus, they've caught onto Karma, they've caught onto Caitlyn, uh, all these things. Uh, Zeri as well, uh, Syndra, you know, Azir. Uh, people are actually liking range. So what I'm looking for to answer that, whereas in worlds where everyone was liking engage and I was looking for disengage things to answer it, now people are liking range. So I'm looking for engage tools to answer it. And I think Diana Yas is like super reliable, really volatile, like can just explode games. Um... Also, Diana has multiple build path options. She can go for Rocket Belt or she can go for Jack Show. I think the Jack Show version is definitely interesting. 
Um, so yeah, that's one thing that I would like to see. And uh, another thing is Nocturne. I think Nocturne can fulfill a similar role to Vi, but with more disruption. And when you pick him, he can also technically be a lane flex as well. Um, but he's very he's very good at single target lockdown. Um, Anathema's Nocturne can deal with things like Zeri. Uh, not to the same degree as Vi, but like I said, he does other things as well. Vi, you're picking, and literally all she does is ult Zeri. Nocturne, you pick him, he's turning the lights off, he's making picks. Uh, he's a flex in your draft as well, which can enable other things. Um, he has way better clear, you know, he, he scales better. Um, he has better build path options, all these things. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to see Nocturne as well. Uh, let's move into mid lane. So Riot have broken Seraph's embrace, and as such, Rise is in the game. Uh, Rise looks really good. Um, I think he's like a little bit overstart. He's about to get nerfed. Uh, so yeah, we're seeing a lot of Rise in the same vein. There's also Cassidin. Cassidin is just a lot harder to punish now. He, um, with the new Seraphs, he's extremely tanky. Uh, it feels much more reliable that he makes it to that level 16 where he just deletes everybody in the game. Um, so yeah, Cassidin, also a thing. Uh, the new Syndra. Oops, I accidentally closed my Syndra tab. But imagine Syndra is still on the screen for a second. You saw her for a moment, but now she's gone. Uh, spoiler into what the next champion is. Uh, but yeah, the new Syndra. Um, she's much better at like poking from range and things like that than the old Syndra. Um, she obviously scales a lot better than the old Syndra. And she isn't quite as strong in lane as the old Syndra. Those are the main differences. Uh, but I'm liking the new Syndra a lot. Every time I see her, she looks really good. Uh, she seems to have some very, very good matchups in mid lane. Uh, a lot of what she can do is very nice for a mid laner to bring. Um, she's kind of like that. She's kind of got that scaling mage thing going on, but she also can delete people in mid lane 2v2s um, with her ult, obviously. So yeah, Syndra looks really good and I'm a, I'm a fan. Silas. Already talked about Silas, but there's a lot of good ults in the meta for him, and uh, a lot of the lanes he's making it through with relative ease, uh, like Rise, like Cassidin. Um, I actually think Cassidin might get a bit of a free lane into um, Silas, uh, but also Syndra. I don't think Syndra particularly has the tools to bully him. We've seen a lot of Silas into Syndra. Um, obviously, with the new scaling version of Syndra, she doesn't bully him as hard in lane, so he can get through that. Uh, so yeah, liking Silas. Um, we've got Ari. Ari's being picked in combination with Vi. It's something we saw a lot in 2022. Um, Ari is the mid lane version of Na and Wukong for me, where she's just stable, reliable, comfortable, and sort of okay. Uh, she's not bad. She's not great. But if you pick her, she's going to do what you want. The other champion that's a bit like that is Azir. Um, but I actually think Azir is pretty good. Uh, people, Azir got a bad reputation because all we had for a while is solo queue, and pro players are much, much better at piloting Azir than solo queue players are. Um, but yeah, Azir is still good. He's not quite as good as he was on Worlds Patch, um, but Azir is still good, uh, and he's present. And for the same reasons, flexibility, uh, I don't think top Azir is as big of a thing anymore. It could be picked in niche circumstances, but not to the same degree that I thought it was pickable at Worlds. Um, but mid Azir, he can poke, he can engage with shuffle, he can disengage with uh, the shove. So yeah, Azir is still very flexible, scales very well, good champ. Uh, what would I like to see? I mean, the role's pretty stale. Like you'll notice that I didn't mention a lot of champions. Mid feels very underwhelming as a role right now. Um, but at Worlds, into a lot of these engage reliant drafts, we were seeing Swain. I would really like to see Swain again. Uh, I don't know why this guy has completely disappeared out of the meta because uh, I think he's really good. He can even like hard frontline for you with Radiant Virtue. Um, really good synergy with him. Like when he ults is exactly when you want the stats from Radiant to come on. Um, but outside of that, you can just go for the Leandri's Rylai's build and be an absolute damage menace to anyone that has to run at your team. So yeah, missing Swain. Uh, Anivia as well, but I think anivia has got some reasonably difficult matchups at the moment. Azir, Syndra shouldn't be super easy for her. Um, uh, Swain into Syndra is difficult, I will say. But um, I'm talking more into these hard engage drafts that we're seeing. Uh, the one thing I will say about Swain is that it gives Silas the best ult in the game. So you have to be very, very careful about that. Right, on to AD carry. Uh, Caitlyn, 
still the best AD carry in the game. I'm going to mention it here as well, but outside of Caitlyn, I don't think you should be picking Lux. But Lux with Caitlyn, uh, Lux got a buff coming into this year, and Caitlyn Lux is now just dominating bot lane even more than it was on Worlds Patch, and Caitlyn is pretty much always banned from what I've seen. Um, Ash. People are finally picking up on Ash. You'll remember I was talking about Ash a lot on Worlds Patch. Um, two role flex, obviously, uh, AD carry and support. Uh, build diversity with the sort of cooldown reduction arrow build that supports are playing. You can also play that while farming. Um, Rat IRL, I know, does that a lot in solo queue. Um, but you can also just play the traditional crit Ash, and she's very, very good, very serviceable, brings a lot to the team. Uh, great utility, good damage. Yeah, I, I, high range. I like Ash a lot. Um, similar to Ash, Varus. Varus is still pretty much the same as he was at Worlds, and I think he's one of the premier picks in AD Carry. Um, yeah, I, not much to say about Varus other than he's really flexible. Lots of build paths can play in a lot of comps. Same things that I was saying at Worlds, pretty much. Uh, another thing that we're seeing still from Worlds, Lucian Nami. Um... It's being overpicked, I think. I don't think it's as good as people think it is. I think it's going to disappear next patch, so I feel kind of redundant talking about it here uh, because Lucian's getting nerfed, Nami's getting nerfed, and the crit items are changing to decentivize going Gale Force Rapid Fire. Uh, you're going to want Infinity Edge second, and that lowers the power of the Lucian-Nami combo because it lowers the range of it. But yeah, Lucian-Nami being picked a lot. Um, I think it's still weak to the same stuff uh, as I talked about in the first segment of this video, so yeah. Not the biggest fan of Lucian Nami, but it, it has its spots and it exists in the matter. It's definitely a threat that you have to consider. Um, some things that have come back. Zeri. Zeri came back from spring, well, summer. Uh, she was nerfed going into Worlds Patch. Um, she was obliterated going into Worlds Patch, should I say. Uh, but Zeri is back after a mini rework, and I like this version of Zeri. She has really good single target damage now with the on hit moving onto her E. Uh, it still scales like an absolute monster, teamfight menace. Um, I'm, I for one, I'm happy that Zeri's in the meta. I like seeing Zeri uh, with these like really controlled team fights. Um, yeah, I think Zeri's really good. I think she's probably after Caitlyn the best AD carry you can pick, but we'll have to see how that shakes up. Uh, the other one is obviously Sivir. Similar to Zeri with this like teamfight menace, she brings more utility, uh, she enables a lot of things. I think Sivir Swain is something that should be explored, uh, speeding up the Swain and allowing him to cover some of the weaknesses that he has. Um, also Darius, I didn't mention in top lane, but a lot of the time where I was advocating for Darius at Worlds, I would advocate for Darius now, especially if you've got a Sivir. Um, yeah, but Sivir is good, we're seeing a lot of Sivir. Um, let's talk about some AD carries that I want to see. Neela. We're seeing a lot of aggressive drafts reliant on auto attacks. We're seeing Jaxes, we're seeing Vi's, we're seeing Silas, we're seeing um, Azir's, we're seeing Wukong's. All of these champions are hard countered by Neela. If you have a draft, the, the whole draft is reliant on that. Neela's great. The reason I think we're not seeing Neela is the supports that we're seeing at the moment. Um, Neela thrives into melee engaged supports like nautilus like leona um, blitzcrank these sort of things we're not seeing those right now so i think that's why we're not seeing neela but teams have to be very very careful drafting those because if they do draft those engage supports with some of the stuff we're already seeing i think it'll open up neela to 1v9 the game so neela is like always at the back of my mind uh, and then Draven. I talked about it in the original segment. I think Draven's really good. I don't know why people aren't playing him. I don't know if it's a comfort thing. I know Deft plays him, um, but outside of that, it's like, I don't think anyone's really playing Draven, but this guy is so good. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to see more Draven. And then finally, onto the last role, we've got support. Um, I'll just quickly go over Nami again. It's the Lucian Nami thing. That's basically all I need to say about it. Uh, Nami could also be paired with Draven or Vayne. You know, there's a few other things that could be paired with Nami, but I think her, um, the premium of her is for the Lucian Nami combo. Uh, now I want to talk about what I think is one of the best champions in the game and should be banned pretty much every game. Karma. Karma almost automatically guarantees you prio in any bot lane 2v2. Karma is insane in bot lane. She also hard enables certain picks that otherwise shouldn't be able to function, like Olaf. Um, 
She's a three roll flex, sorry, three roll flex. She can play support, she can play top, she can play mid. I've heard it argued that she could play, like fulfill the AD carry role like a Seraphine. I'm not sure about that, but I know she can play both solo lanes. Uh, she's got great build diversity, Moonstone, Radiant Virtue, Shirelias. Uh, a solo lane Karma, if pushed, could probably go Leandri's if the enemy team is quite beefy and they're lacking magic damage outside of her. Um, but I think like Radiant and Moonstone are her best mythics. But Karma is so flexible, just so strong, wins lanes like by existing. Uh, very, very good into Lucian Nami as well. I really like Karma at the moment. She works with pretty much any AD carry. Um, yeah, Karma, absolutely disgusting. Next champ, it's been nerfed, but Yumi, teams are still not answering it in the way that I would like them to. And uh, as such, we're just seeing a lot of Yumi bans. When it does get through, it's paired with Siva or... Zeri, uh, it can also be paired with the Nila, uh, which we haven't seen yet. Um, but yeah, it's for the most part, it's just banned because the answers aren't being explored. Lulu. I've talked about Lulu in, uh, in the first segment. It's being used as a Lucian Nami answer, but it's just pretty good overall. Uh, I think it's kind of like a Karma skewed slightly more towards defense, kind of like how Gragas is a... Sejuani skewed more towards defense than offense. Um, Lulu is like a Karma skewed more towards defense than offense, which is really good into Lucian Nami. That's what you want. Um, but if you're wanting to be more aggressive, I think you would want the Karma. Uh, but Lulu's really good. Um, similar reasons to Karma, really. Um, next up, we've got a Karma but skewed more towards offense, and that's Heimerdinger. Uh, Heimerdinger support, we saw a lot at Worlds, and we're seeing it again. Um, it's really, really good in lane. Uh, very powerful, makes it hard for people to engage into you, just brings a lot of damage. Um, yeah, it's like a very, very aggressive version of Karma. Um, I like Heimerdinger. Again, I think Karma does it all and is just the best, but Heimer's certainly a viable alternative, um, and I don't think it's bad at all that we're seeing him. Uh, some things that I would want to see. Zillion. Zillion, we're seeing a lot of Zeri Sivir again, right? And Zillion just hard cripples them with his E. Also, if you give them the Yumi, uh, you're guaranteeing yourself a free lane for your Zillion support. Because there is no way that Zeri, uh, Zeri Lulu... Sorry. There is no way that Zeri Yumi or Sivir Yumi are smashing your Zillion in lane. So if you play something like Varus Zillion or Ash Zillion or... You know, you just take the other one. You go Siva Zillion into the Zeri Yumi. Um, the amount of speed that you can get with Siva Zillion is crazy, but also just crippling. It's kind of like how people advocate for Nasus into Zeri or Siva, or also Callista, uh, but we're not seeing Callista. Uh, but Zillion does the same thing with his E as Nasus does with his W. Uh, he doesn't get the attack speed slow, but that's not necessary. Um, it's nice, for sure, but it's not necessary. And yeah, Zillion just does a lot, and... The thing that he does that Nasus doesn't is he scales into Narnia. Like, this guy is one of the few champions that actually keeps up with the Yumi in terms of scaling. And I think it could be argued that he surpasses the Yumi in, in terms of scaling. Um, really, really underrated champ, specifically as an answer to what we're seeing. Um, Morgana. Don't worry about the fact that the splash has Kale. I don't think Kale's in the best spot right now. Uh, but Morgana, we're seeing Vi a lot, right? Morgana makes her a minion. Uh, if we can, if you can ever slot Morgana into a draft, be it jungle or support, or even possibly mid lane, I think she's serviceable, but mainly jungle support, um, you can make Vi absolutely miserable. Uh, I've not actually seen the clears of Morgana jungle. It's something I've been meaning to test, but I thought it was really good at Worlds. Um, obviously, the jungle has changed a lot in regards to how you clear it. Um, but yeah, I think Morgana should be seeing some play. Uh, especially given that Caitlyn is so powerful. I mean, Caitlyn never gets through, but if she does, Caitlyn Morgana, disgusting. Um, and then finally, a sleeper pick is Pike. I think Pike is the the champion in a world where we're seeing no aggressive supports. Well, I guess you could call like Heimerdinger Karma aggressive supports, but like engage sort of pick themed supports. Pike is the one that shines for me. Um, he has so much volatility. Uh combined with like the diana yasuo that i was talking about before i think he can be really potent like you could flex the yasuo into the bot lane with the pike play diana jungle and have something more controlled in your top mid um but yeah i think pike 
certainly has some sort of explosive star power uh, that I would like to see picked every now and again, especially by some of the premier pike players in the world like Carrier. So um, yeah, that's that's it for my uh, meta overview of Season 13 so far, I guess. We'll have to see how things shake up, but it's certainly been interesting diving back into pro play, and uh, I'm excited for all the games to come, excited to make more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later. Bye.